Uh, moving on to Trump's trials, uh, jury selection, of course, in the hush money trial begins on Monday. What is your over under on last minute delays or delays during jury selection? And at what point do the delays look desperate? Well, they already look like they're repeatedly losing. Uh, I guess as a legal reporter, it's not for me to say whether a, uh, an allowed motion is desperate because they're allowed. Uh, you're allowed to file losing motions. Donald Trump's lawyers have lost a bunch. Uh, they lost the Jack Smith appeal all the way up to the Supreme Court. We're going to see if they can reverse it there. And as you mentioned, they've lost these delay tactics. Uh, just yesterday, the high court uh, in New York of basically affirming uh, the appeals court that this this Monday start holds, so that's a win for the DA and a loss for Trump. And so I don't see a lot of other avenues uh, where they're going to be able to delay this. I think jury selection, as Lisa and others have mentioned, is going to start Monday. And that can take some extra time in a case of this magnitude. We, we use this word unprecedented. Um, usually you're trying to make sure people don't have a random link to a defendant or a random animus against a group. Here, uh, fair-minded people, Mika, I think you'd agree, based on your your job, you talk to a lot of people. I bet you know plenty of fair-minded people who have really strong opinions about Donald Trump. Uh, and so it's going to be harder to pick this jury because if their opinions are so strong that they say, I, I don't know, I'm, if they answer the question honestly, do you think that he really could be 100% innocent? Can you, can you have your mind open to that? And they go, I don't know, they're gone. So this could take longer. Now, right. are, there, are there enough people in New York who can do that job? Absolutely, but it's going to take time to find them. And I'll say this. Uh, it's better for the system that we all observe this, that we get fair, open-minded jurors. Uh, it's not good for the system, and it wouldn't be fair to the defendant um, to have anything other than that process. So let's have that process in fairness to him uh, and the other parties involved. So ahead of Monday's start to Trump's hush money trial, Ari, you interviewed someone who was connected to one of the key witnesses in the case. The, the charges allege Trump paid adult film star Stormy Daniels right before the 2016 election to cover up an affair. She says they had. And last night on The Beat, you played your interview with former lawyer for Stormy Daniels, Michael Avenatti. Avenatti is currently serving a 19-year prison sentence in California for stealing millions of dollars from clients and trying to extort Nike. You asked him having said all that, about the timing of next week's New York trial. Here's what he had to say. Well, I think what I'm about to say is going to surprise a lot of people, and that is that, um, you know, I think this is the wrong case at the wrong time, Ari. Um, I, I think that the case is in many ways stale at this juncture. You're talking about conduct that occurred some eight years ago. Uh, I think the uh, fact that it's occurring in state court in New York uh, is a mistake. Uh, and I think that when you are going to uh, potentially deprive tens of millions of Americans uh, of their choice for the presidency of the United States, whether we agree with those folks or not, or regardless of what we may think of Donald Trump, I think it's a mistake to do it based on a case of this nature. So uh, tell me about the insight that you got from him. I'm also curious why, why you wanted to talk to him. Well, this is the first time he's spoken out on the case since he's been to prison. Uh, I think he was on a lot of different media for the, the same reason that we wanted to talk to him again yesterday. There wouldn't likely be a DA investigation, let alone an indictment of Donald Trump, let alone what is now the first ever trial before president without the way that Mr. Avenatti uh, ignited and pushed those issues. Um, now he also is, and I asked him in the interview about his crimes, convictions, the dishonesty that he was convicted of and how he treated his clients and why we should take his word on anything now. Uh, but as with so many people around a trial, uh, the DA doesn't get to pick perfect witnesses or fact patterns, uh, and we cover who's around there. So I think it was incredibly uh, newsworthy, quite frankly, to hear from someone who ignited this and who then had his own problems, who then now we were speaking from inside his prison cell. I mean, viewers may remember what Mr. Avenatti at one point uh, was in the limelight a lot, was doing a lot of television, other interviews. People were following his every word. Then, of course, he had this huge fall, this heavy pre prison sentence. And this is the first time anyone's heard from him uh, in any substantive fashion since he went to prison. So that prison interview, I think, is clearly legally relevant and newsworthy. As for the remarks he made, he did say 
that he has criticisms of the DA's case. He did say the federal and state issues, which are complicated, could help uh, Donald Trump maybe reverse it on appeal. Uh, other legal experts have said that. Um, he also said he expects Trump to be convicted in this case. That's interesting, given that he's so close to it. Um, and then he raised his longstanding disputes with Michael Cohen. Now, Mr. Cohen is someone we expect to hear from perhaps in the trial. I would certainly have yeah. him back on the on the beat. And Mr. Cohen, like Mr. Avenatti, are lawyers who were around Donald Trump, who ended up on trial, convicted, and doing prison time. Um, this is the world of this trial, uh, Mika. And as observers, I don't know that we get to pick uh, who the players are, but it's certainly interesting to hear from him. And I do think the last point I'll make is this jury is going to be presented uh, with a lot of attacks and discussion of who is credible. Is Ms. Daniels mm. credible? Is Mr. Cohen credible? Is Mr. Weisselberg mm -hmm. credible in what he wants to say about perhaps what went wrong at Trump Org or whether they lied on documents, which is key to convicting Trump? And he's up for perjury today, which may be the DA's way of trying to box in any defense he makes of Trump. So I'm not seeing a ton of perfect witnesses. Uh, you remember right. the perfect phone call we were told about, Mika? I don't think that <laughs> right. call turned out to be perfect. I don't think all the players are perfect, but the question we're going to keep our eye on is, who knows what, what can be proven, and does it mean that Donald Trump convicted a crime? Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.